Oseo. Oseo is Cherokee for hello. So Oseo. My name is Kim Simpson. I'm a lay person from the Central Texas Conference, and I come to you today as chair of the Commission on General Conference. When the Commission on General Conference was trying to decide what we would use as a theme for General Conference, we knew we wanted something that would bring us together, something that would be of common ground, something that would help build bridges amongst the delegation and all those who were attending. So we looked at Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. And we started looking at the translations and how this will translate in other languages than English. And what we found was be still was not what we English speaking people think of quiet, non-movement, cont contemplative uh, being. But in other languages, it was not translated the same. It's throw yourself down. And, and so we were a little hesitant to use that part. We decided that, and know that I am God, would be a good way for everyone to understand. It translated the same in all the languages. And it was a good place to put our emphasis for general conference on God, which is where it should be. It focuses our attention on God. It is simple, it is straightforward, and it says God is God and we are not. It reminds us that in the difficult waters of our church right now, it reminds us that we need God and that God is still God. Our mission is to help others to learn and love God as we do, as we serve God. That is the mission of the United Methodist Church. We also need to remember in our conversations, in our deliberations, in our discussions, in our decisions, that we are to keep God as the center and our focus in what we do. Our actions and our decisions are to bring him glory. That is why we are here. We are seeking to fulfill his will and not our own agendas. The theme of knowing God can be approached in many different ways. We each learn in different ways. Some of us are visual learners. Some of us are auditory or hearing learners, and we know that there are a myriad of ways in which we can know God. So each day, the general conference will focus on a different aspect of knowing God. Some of these could be hope, belief, rejoice, love, serve, and each day a different scripture will bring about the emphasis on the expression of God that's being lifted for that day. Knowing God is not possible without knowing God's grace. We know of God's grace that was before us, calling us into relationship with him, calling us into the love that he has for us. You know, I think John Wesley had something to say about grace. We all know of his means of grace, his provenient grace that is all around us, calling us into relationship with him, the justifying grace that saves us from ourselves and our sins, and the sanctifying grace that walks with us each day on our spiritual growth. On those aspects, on those means of grace, is one of the fundamental beliefs of United Methodism. Well, you can't know of God's grace and be part of understanding this without prayer. Prayer is how we become intimate with God and have a relationship with God. Taking our hopes, our dreams, our confusions, our wants and needs to God in prayer and listening quietly to hear how he can guide us and lead us in our ways of growing spiritually. We have lots of opportunity for prayer in our daily lives, 
but we will also have opportunities for structured prayer leading up to and during general conference. And to help us know what some of these opportunities are is Tom Albin. Thank you, Kim, for the privilege of being there. And thank you, Jim, for loaning me this stole as a physical reminder that you are wrapped in prayer. It's my privilege to help you see and understand the ways that you as delegates, alternates, staff, and the Council of Bishops will be the most prayed for people on the planet, or at least 14 million of us can join in prayer for you. Um, there are seven dimensions to the prayer ministry. I'll say them quickly. This will be available to you uh, in the recording, and I'll talk about them just very briefly. But there's a guide to prayer for the 40 days prior to the general conference. There'll be a weekly video to help you and your people use the guide to prayer around the world. A prayer website where we can find the resources in multiple languages. A podcast each day of the general conference. A beautiful prayer space and intercessory prayer volunteers and spiritual directors. Number one, 40 days of prayer. Be still is to know God. And to, when God is known, then we have a way and a knowledge about how to find our way forward. So French, English, Portuguese, Kiswahili. There may be some of you who can help us with the Korean and the Spanish translations. All of these are available for you. The weekly video will begin with a bishop, Hoshibata, giving us an introduction and then each week, a member of the Central Conference or one of the jurisdictions will give us a picture of the wake, the content, and the process. Wouldn't it be great to go from this place and to call the whole church into prayer? There's a website, umcpraise.org, where you will find resources, you'll find uh, information, and Kara and I will be there on that website uh, to help you if you need things. I don't know whether you have a conference prayer person or chair of spiritual direction, but if so, ask them to meet us there. A podcast during the general conference, so you can put it on while you comb your hair or take your walk, and the UM United Methodist Communications are helping us pull that together. The voices will be people who have been spiritual directors at previous general conferences. So they'll understand the ethos of that day and that journey as we go together. A beautiful prayer room is available in Minneapolis. Uh, Reverend Pam Sadar is the chair of the prayer committee of the host committee who's serving there. A place for spiritual rest, relaxation. There'll be prayer partners there. There'll be spiritual directors there. And I hope you'll come and meet us there. The final two, some of you have people in your conference who might want to come as an intercessory prayer volunteer or as a volunteer spiritual director. These folks are asked to provide additional information. There's a peer review process so that we're available to all of you. But the most important thing is that we pray. I'm going to ask my friend and colleague, Kara Oliver, who is the executive director of the Center for Spiritual Formation at the Upper Room, to come and guide us in this exercise as we practice what we teach. Thank you. Good morning. It is my joy to invite you to pause for just a few breaths more before we enter into this very full agenda. So I invite you to take a moment and just to notice, as you prepare for this day, for reports on legislation, are you already leaning forward into this day? Can you feel that physically? Shoulders tense, leaning forward, stomach tight. Are you leaning forward into what has not yet come? Is your mind already racing ahead? toward the report that you will give, the presentation that you have on the agenda, 
your own questions, or your own remarks? If so, I invite you now to take a deep breath, to lean back, to plant your feet, to be present in this moment, this present moment with God and with each other. I invite you to release the planning and the strategizing just for a few breaths. Shift from your thinking mind to your heart. Breathe and ask, how is it with my soul? And maybe even be curious, how is it with the souls of the people around you? Friends, the upper room invites people to create daily life with God. We extend an invitation to walk with anyone who longs to know God, to be formed in the image of Christ, and to listen for the promptings and the warnings of the Holy Spirit. We do not presume to offer one format or one method or one way to engage God daily. But we have journeyed with disciples around the world for over 80 years, offering resources in the Wesleyan tradition of spirituality that are biblically grounded, theologically sound, and spiritually transformative. And it is in that spirit that we invite you and journey with you, that we offer you the General Conference Prayer Guide. In that guide, you will find scripture and meditations and a small group guide that are all modeled after the Upper Room Daily Devotional that I hope many of you are familiar with. This is our invitation and our hope for you and for your delegations, for your congregations and your communities of faith that you might pause each day to create your own daily life with God, and that each week you might come together in small groups as companions together in this journey to general conference to know that God is God. So in an abbreviated way, as we gathered this morning, that gathering might go something like this. If you are not under the threat of the fire marshal, you would light a candle. <laughs> when we light a candle, we do not presume that the candle brings God into our midst. We light the candle to remember that God is already present with us. Please pray with me. Let us come into the presence of God. I invite you to hear again the scripture from this morning, Joshua 1 9, this time from the CEB. I will read it three times. With each reading, I invite you to become more still. Let the words move from your head, from your intellect, from your strategizing. Let the words live in your heart and your genuine affection for one another and into your soul that longs to know that God is God. I've commanded you to be brave and strong, haven't I? Don't be alarmed or terrified, because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I've commanded you to be brave and strong, haven't I? Don't be alarmed or terrified because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I 
I've commanded you to be brave and strong, haven't I? Don't be alarmed or terrified because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The word of God for the people of God. Now, as you're willing, I invite you to turn to one or two other people where you are to answer one of two questions. You just have 30 seconds each person. What in this scripture passage is meaningful to you? Maybe that's one word that stood out to you. Or where are you challenged by this scripture passage? Again, this is an abbreviated form, so 30 seconds and I'll call you back with an amen. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Part of being fully present, part of being fully present here for the task and the purpose that God has called us is to release our burdens and our worries to God, trusting that God will hold the people and the situations and our faith communities that we have left at home in order for us to fully listen and participate here. So again, I wanna invite you to turn to one or two other people. What is a joy or a concern that is occupying your mind or your heart or your soul that you have left behind in order to be here together? And ask for prayer from one another. Again, I'll give you one minute. And all God's people said, Amen. (laughs) Friends, in the minutes and the hours and the days that are ahead of us, I pray that you can remember this stillness, this connectedness to one another, this rootedness in the God that we know. You can return to it in any moment, in these days or in the journey to General Conference, with a simple inhale and exhale or in the request for prayer. Let us close with this final benediction. I'll pray it first and then let us pray it together. Let us go in peace to serve God and our neighbors in all that we do. Amen.